Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato on today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 84. The band is Oasis, and the song is Don't Look Back in Anger. Coming up next. Don't Look Back in Anger was off Oasis' second record entitled What's the Story, Morning Glory, which came out on October 2nd, 1995. It was the third single, I believe, and it was actually released as a single in 96. Now, I had the great fortune of seeing Oasis play on their first two tours. And by the time the second record came out, they were just this massively big band. And this has become a huge anthem over the years. The song was written by Noel Gallagher, the guitarist, and it's the first single where he was the lead singer on. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about the song, if you pick up your guitar or sit down at the piano to play, is that it's tuned about 25 cents sharp. It begins in C major, and it's very reminiscent. It's very reminiscent of the John Lennon song, Imagine, it has the same type of piano figure. Noel Gallagher is known to lift a couple things from the Beatles. Let's check out the intro. Okay, the verse chord progression is C, G, A minor, then E major. That's the one chord that's not in the key of C. It's a secondary dominant, a five of six, and it's reminiscent of Imagine. And then F, G, C, and then the turnaround is A minor, G. That's the verse chord progression. Let's talk about the individual elements that make up the introduction. So obviously it begins with the solo piano, which I demonstrated. And then the guitar comes in um, with that lick. And then the second lick is this. And then right into the chords. Let's take a listen to the guitar part. The next thing that happens at the beginning of the verse is that there's actually an organ that gets added in with the piano. Let's check that out. Next we have the drum and bass entrance. One of the cool things about Alan White's drum groove here it's very similar to the Amen break that is the most sampled break in all of hip hop. Obviously Alan White's groove is much slower, but this particular type of groove do do det do do det is in all Brit pop music of the early 90s. Next, let's solo Noel's verse vocal. Slip inside the eye of your mind. Don't you know you might find a better place to play? One of the things that makes this song great is that it has a great verse melody. Noel is only using the notes of C major pentatonic. C, D, E, G, A in the melody. So he starts in the third and the C chord. Then he goes to the fifth of the G chord, D. Then A minor lands on the root, and then then back to the fourth, to the flat seven of the E chord, and then sixth on the F chord. So it's all pentatonic. It's a very very simple melody. So. One thing that I noted when I did the What Makes This Song Great on Elton John's Rocket Man is the way that Elton finishes phrases or each individual phrase like this. Listen. Slip inside the eye of your mind. 
right there. Don't you know you might find a better place to play? So there's all those little caps, is what I call them, or periods at the end of the sentence. Da 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 right? If it didn't have those, it wouldn't sound like the phrases that each individual phrase had come to an end. It's like a little concluding, it's a little punctuation that finishes each phrase. Let's check out the B part of the verse. You said that you never Same melody. But all the things that you see. Little change there. Nice big space. And then we're into the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus begins on the four chord, which is F major. So it goes four major, four minor, F minor, and then C major. It does that twice. Again, F major, F minor, C major. So it's four major, four minor to one, two times. Uh, there's a really cool thing that happens. There's a little guitar stab that I love here. It's very subtle. That. And there's those fills that, that fill each line, so it's like. It's an F minor seven over the four minor chord, right? And then you'll notice when he's singing these lines, there's a fill between each vocal phrase. Listen. So it's the revolution from And then again, you also notice that the drums change the feel here. Let's check that out. Riding on the floor tom. Still the same groove though, but with the floor tom riding instead of the hi-hat. Another thing is that the so is that you have that line right there. Hear that? Da, da, da. Now I love that spot right there where it goes G major, G sharp diminished to A minor. So it walks right up. G major, da 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 G sharp diminished, A minor, G, and then F and the guitar and bass go. In the build up to the beginning of the chorus. There's also a cool thing that happens on the G chord. Let's check that out. There's a hidden dissonance that you hear right there. What that is, is there's a sus4 on that G chord. Listen, I'll play it. And then... And then when it goes to the A minor, there's a... The, and then... And there's G over B. There's a lot of cool things going on there in the guitar parts that create that tension over this part of the melody that I think is especially strong. When you hear that sus4, on, he's, he's singing the note D, but you have that fourth in there, so it's like. Another thing that happens there is the drum groove changes with a buildup. So it goes from the tom groove here, like this, to this buildup. Awesome. Great build. And you, you hear the bass going. Let's check that out. And then Noel plays that great fill. 
<laughs> that leads you right into the top of the chorus. That's just a perfect chorus melody. It starts with an octave. I love that. Da, 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 Beautiful sequence there. Da, 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 da. Right, there's that phrase ending. Then da, da. Resolves with a right down to the tonic. Who'd you say? Another thing you'll notice about the song is that the vocals are doubled, double tracked in the chorus. It's Noel singing it twice. Check it out. I'm so sad it can wait. She knows it's too late as we're walking on by. It almost sounds like it's Liam in there with him. But it's super strong. It's just so powerful. The Beatles used to double their vocals all the time. I mean, everybody doubles their vocals. That's just a common thing to do to make it jump out of the mix there. So that melody there is accompanied by this. There's an entrance of the strings. Check it out. And then we have those right here. Right there, all the young dudes. That's a Mat the Hoople quote right there, which is a great song that I should do a What Makes This Song Great on because that's an amazing song. So in addition to that, here's the drum groove that happens in the chorus. Ride. Once again, all those snare 16th note. That's a perfect example of a caveman fill right there. So simple, just the right thing. And then we have the post chorus interlude. With these guitar fills. Simple, all pentatonic. Take me to then into the second verse. Now you never hear that anymore. An instrumental section that has some guitar fills where there's just, we're just kind of grooving along. That's just something that was left in the past. Nowadays, once again, as I call it, the ADD culture. Nowadays, if you have any space in your tune, the producer takes it out immediately or has to fill it with something, some type of a vocal hook. There's rarely any time in pop music nowadays where there's no singing. I mean, there has to be a real obvious lead line. It's never something like this that's just a vamp with a couple fills with some space in the song. The second verse is almost the same as the first with the exception of the second half of it that has these really cool unison bends. Check it out. Please don't put your life Single note guitar part there. She said the brains I had went to my head. Awesome. Step outside, cause summertime's in blue. Stand up beside the fireplace. Take that look from off your face. Cause you ain't ever gonna burn my heart out. That's a killer fill that Alan White plays right there. Caveman.
The chorus will turn around twice at the end, and then we have the tag. Let's check it out. Oh, total bottom fill there. Listen. Oh, awesome. And then everybody drops out. F sus2, then F minor7. And then we have the the tag. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first-time viewer, don't forget to ring the bell. Very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the Beato Ear Training Method at beatoeartraining.com. You want to get a good ear and be able to figure out these things really fast? Try my ear training course. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.